The first thing you need to pay attention to is protecting your eyes. Make sure to wear safety glasses. You need them to adjust your laser focus, as you cannot look directly at the laser without them. The second thing to consider is the power of your laser. If you have a low power laser, you can't engrave the copper itself directly. Instead, you have to apply paint to the PCB, engrave the paint, and then etch it in a solution to remove the unwanted copper. My laser has a 4 watt optical output power, which is enough for engraving the paint. Other important factors that affect your engraving quality are First, the quality of your laser. If you have a cheap laser model like I do, don't expect too much from it, because it may have a rectangular dot shape. This can result in different tolerances when moving sideways. The dot size is also important, so make sure to adjust your laser focus. Later in the video, we will demonstrate how to do this. The second thing. The tightness of the belts is another important factor. It can affect the quality, so make sure your belts are tight enough. Third thing is the quality of your stepper drivers. I'm using A4988s with 1 divided by 16 micro stepping. If you have a higher quality drivers like TMC2208s with 1 divided by 256 micro stepping, your 45 degree lines will be much cleaner. The engraver I'm going to use is my own design. You can find the link for it in the description. So let's continue engraving our PCB. The paint I'm using is a random black spray paint. Before using the paint, make sure your PCB is clean. If it's not, you can wash it in the sink with some soap. Be sure to dry it before painting. It's important to apply the paint evenly and avoid using too much paint, as it could be too thick and require your laser to make multiple passes to engrave it, which will take longer. Once the paint has dried, we are ready to proceed. I am opening my CAD software. I'm going to use Proteus, but you can use other CAD softwares as well. Just search for the name of the software you are using and add export bitmap to your search. You'll find many results on Google. Here's a test circuit I just created. It's really basic and nothing fancy. It includes some SMD resistors, 555 chips, and a test for different track widths. I'm going to use the free laser gear GBL software, so we need a PNG file to upload. To do this, I'm clicking output and then export graphics and choosing export bitmap. I'm selecting the 600 dpi resolution and deselecting the unnecessary layers. We only need the bottom copper and board edge. I've already set the file address, so I'm clicking OK. We are done here. So let's continue. As you can see, I've opened my PNG file. Now we can make some small adjustments from here. For example, our image is not perfectly aligned with the board edge, so I'm aligning it. Additionally, I'm painting over the small holes with black paint. For now, I'll save the file and we are ready to continue the laser gear GBL program. I connect my laser engraver to my computer and plug it into the mains. Then I click connect on the screen to establish a connection to the laser engraver. Now let's open our PNG file by clicking file, open file and selecting the path where the PNG is saved. Good, we successfully opened our image. Next I click invert color and flip image vertical. After that, I select Vectorize, because I want my laser to outline the traces, which is faster than other styles. Now we need to adjust the settings until we find the perfect spot. I think this looks good now, so I click next to proceed. Here we are entering our engraving speed. In most cases, going slower will improve engraving quality, so I'm typing 600mm per minute. Additionally, I selected constant power. And for the S-min, which represents the minimum power of the laser when it's not engraving, I type 0. As for the maximum power by engraving, I type 1000 to work at 100% power. Then I enter my PCB size. 
which is 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters. Finally, I click create to proceed. Before engraving, we need to ensure our laser is focused and aligned with the PCB. I click focus and laser turns on at low power, allowing me to adjust by turning the tip. Since I already adjusted it previously, I won't change it now. Next, I click the frame button to outline the engraving area. Then I align my PCB to fit the engraving area. This may require multiple attempts to fit perfectly. Once aligned, we can start the engraving. I want the laser to pass twice, so I adjust the setting. Now it will double pass all the lines to ensure all the paint is engraved. With everything set, I hit start. I prefer not to stand near the laser while it's engraving, so I go into another room to avoid inhaling burnt paint particles and minimize exposure to the laser. Even though I'm wearing safety glasses, I avoid looking at the laser. Once the engraving is done, the software makes a sound signaling me to come back and check the results. After some time you can see it's done. It's not perfect, but we now understand our limits. Next, I wash it with a bit of water. If you notice any imperfections, you can correct them with some tweezers. Now it's time to etch it. I'm going to place it in my etching solution which is a mixture of 40% hydrogen peroxide and 60% hydrochloric acid. If your circuit is etching too fast, you can add some tap water to slow it down. I prefer to etch it slowly, so that if something goes wrong, I can easily intervene. Make sure to etch it in a well-ventilated area, like a balcony or a garden, to avoid dangerous gases. Now that it's done etching, I washed it under the sink. Next, I'm going to remove the paint with some acetone. As you can see, it easily peels off. After this, I washed it one more time under the sink. And you can see it's done. Unfortunately, tracks thinner than 25 mm disappeared, even though they seemed fine before etching. This happened because I left the PCB in the acid for too long. Since this is a test PCB, I won't be drilling any holes into it. However, if you need to drill holes, you can use a rotary tool. I usually use my Dremel along with my 3D printed drill press but you can use something smaller if you prefer, like a small DC motor with a mandrel. To prevent the drill from sliding off the PCB, you can use a screwdriver to mark the drilling points. Also, when drilling, make sure to push the drill bit all the way inside, instead of leaving it flexing like this, as it will be more rigid and precise. Lastly, drilling creates dust that is dangerous to breathe in, so use a mask for protection. I also like to spray a bit of water onto the PCB while drilling to minimize the dust. Now, let's do something different and engrave some text onto the top of the PCB. I'll use the image we already have and crop to the text. Next, I am opening our PNG file again making the adjustments, just like before. Then I decrease my laser power to 50% to avoid burning too much of the PCB. I realign my PCB and select one pass, then hit start.
As you can see, it's perfectly done now. As you can see, these are some of my projects. And they look pretty good. You can do many things with the engraver. The rest is up to your imagination and skills. If you liked my video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this video guys. Take care of yourself and don't give up on your dreams. See you later in other projects.